Hello there and welcome to my first video in a series of tutorials that aims at helping people learn DirectX 11.1 and in this first part uh, we're just going to get started and introduce some of the base concepts that we need to know and hopefully it'll help you get a better understanding of what DirectX 11.1 is. My name is Ernest Loveland and I am a DPE intern doing technical evangelism through South Africa's DPE team. So let's get going. So this series, the focus is going to be that we end up learning DirectX 11.1. And uh, I'll be upfront about it, this is not a C++ tutorial. So while we're working in C++, we aren't going to spend too much time focusing on base C++ concepts that you might need to know to be able to do some of the things. We will, however, learn how to use the WinRT components. So we will go into more detail what these WinRT components are in a moment, but uh, anything that we need to actually understand properly, we will cover. So for starters, um, we will be assuming that you have some knowledge of C++. So if you haven't ever used C++ before, I would have to recommend that you go take a look at some tutorials and get some base knowledge. Another thing that uh, we're going to focus on is eventually you should have some proper understanding of how DirectX works and what we have covered in these tutorial series. Uh, I will be trying to keep as much detail as possible and be thorough in my explanation, but do it in such a way that it does not confuse you or make it more difficult for you to understand. So what is DirectX? To put it simply, and we're not going to go into detail of the history of DirectX, it's essentially a set of APIs or interfaces for programming that help us deal with things such as game programming, multimedia, and video. So the libraries that it gives us are all geared towards doing these functions for us. And the point of it is to create an abstraction layer from hardware for us developers. The main thing that's very difficult about graphical programming is the fact that there are so many different machine configurations and hardware configurations for us to, uh, to be able to cope with it easily. And DirectX's abstra uh, abstraction layer helps us by making it much, much easier for us to develop. It handles all of the, the differentiating between different hardware setups and allows us to actually focus on the, the graphical side of our development. So, the next question that you might ask is, what is WinRT? And to put it very simply, uh, WinRT is a set of components for development of Windows Metro styled applications. So with the Windows Store, you will know that uh, those are Metro applications, or are supposed to be Metro applications. And the WinRT framework essentially is what you build all of those applications on top of. and DirectX 11.1 is no different. So just to give you a better overview of where this sits, if you take a look at the slide in front of you, you may recognize it from multiple other talks when it comes to developing for Metro style applications. Uh, if you're making a store app in C Sharp or HTML or C++ and you're looking at tutorials, often this is one of the things that you will be shown. So let's just quickly focus in on this a little bit. If you take a look here in this orange bordered area with the dashed border, this is essentially what we focus on. So in C++, which is the very top level, we have access to the Win, uh, WinRT APIs and the WinRT APIs sits on top of the Windows Core OS systems uh, services. And there are a lot of things that we have access to in addition to just the DirectX SDK. 
uh, for instance, you can add XAML for UI to your application, and we will eventually deal with this. But for starters, our focus will be on just C++ and using the WinRT API for graphics and media. And uh, you can do desktop applications with DirectX, just as a, another example, but we're going to focus on Metro-style applications. So what we're going to cover in this session is we're going to introduce you to the very basic concepts that you will need to know and have some sort of idea about when you actually start your DirectX development. We're going to avoid writing too much actual code. However, there will be actual code-like explanations that we use to give you the best idea possible of what to expect when you actually write the code. And lastly, we're going to talk about the things that we need to use to build our Metro application. So I think now is probably a good idea for us to dive into the session and get through our content. So let's just switch here. Okay, so for now, we're just going to look at each different component that we need to be able to have set up for us to start with our DirectX applications. There are three main things that we need to look at doing. The first thing is we need an entry point. As you would know, for any C++ application, we need to define the entry point, and this may look very similar to you, uh, apart from my spelling errors. It will be something along the lines of int main with some parameters as a function. And we will look at the parameters at a later stage when we actually look at implementing the code. But for now, we will just keep it very simple and hopefully give you a good, a good reference. So basically, when we start out with WinRT, all of our DirectX applications are going to use COM components. And this may sound very off-putting because if you've heard about COM development and you tried it and you didn't like it or it was too difficult, it would probably seem to push you away. But I'd like to, to reiterate right here that, that, that COM development isn't as bad as you might think. So we will start with the very basics. How would we create a class? So when we want to create a WinRT class, we're going to have a public ref class. We're going to have some component name. So let's just call this some component. And we're going to say that it's sealed. S-E-A-L-E-D, sealed. And we're going to have all of our own personal implementations. So our implementations inside of here. And we are going to end our class. It's as simple as that. There, there is a few more things to it. For instance, we will be inheriting from things, but we will cover that as we get to it. And in general, it's very, very easy to remember these things if you start with the basics. So for the starters in this one, we have begun with how to describe a WinRT class. But now there is also a new way to reference instances of our components. So if we were going to use the sum component as an example, if we wanted to make a new one, we'd go sum component, the instance that we want it to be is a new component. Now, there are two very simple changes that we need to do when working with these WinRT classes. The first one being, we need to add this caret operator and this is a, uh, basically a smart pointer. What it does is it says, when there are no more references to the object that we store in this pointer, we should remove it from memory. So if, you, if you're at all familiar with C++ development, you'll understand that this basically means we should hopefully not need to do as much memory management. And even though we will eventually have to do memory management, this is one of the things that'll make things simpler for us. And the other thing we need to add in front of this is ref. And this is just saying we would like a reference to a new instance of components to give to the smart pointer. It's very, very simple and it's very easy to use. So now we can take a look at the actual WinRT components that we will need to use. 
So, for starters, the first class that we're going to need is called a framework view. A framework view is essentially a class that will handle the actual window instance for us uh, inside of our DirectX WinRT application. However, we do need to implement an interface. So the interface that we're going to use is called iFramework-View. And it's very, very easy. When we do our class definition, we're just going to go ref class, and we'll call this one, because it's our view, DirectXView, just like that. And it's sealed. And the next thing that we're going to do is give us a nice colon and I framework view. Now, if you went and typed this directly into your C++ IDE, Visual Studio 2012 or above, you would note that it gives you an error because it does not know where to find this. We're not going to cover that inside this tutorial. However, in a future part, we will cover it in proper details that hopefully you understand and know where to find all of these uh, all of these interfaces as well. So we're going to make an instance of iFramework view and we're going to implement that interface and uh, I think let's just move that up to the top and the next thing that we're going to look at is what we need to have is a factory class. Now what is a factory? Very simply put, the factory that we're going to be using takes a certain takes a certain class and creates an instance of it, of it for us. Essentially, the same way you would go to a factory that makes cars to get a car out of that factory, we want a factory that gives us this iFramework view. And the class we're going to use for this is called iFramework view source. It's very simple. And inside this class, we are also going to need to implement something. So we're going to call this our DirectX view source. And once again, we have sealed. And once again, we have I framework view source. It's as simple as that. And I will talk a little bit, whoops. I will talk a little bit about this in more detail in a moment. But this class has a very, very, very simple function. We will need to implement a create view function. And inside this create view function, we're going to have to return a ref new, very similar to how we spoke about it before, a ref new direct x view. So very, very simple, very easy to do. And our type for this is just simply I framework view. And we give our caret to say that we're returning a smart pointer because we're using ref new and we are good to go. So that is actually a very code oriented uh, explanation of the view source. But very simply, we're going to give the, the WinRT SDKs this, a reference to an, an instance of this class and it will create a DirectX view for us. So if we go back to our int main now, now that we've got DirectX view source, over here, we are going to call something very simple. Now, every application that we start for DirectX is going to need to go through the WinRT's fra uh, WinRT framework's entry point for DirectX applications. And this is very simple. This is just core application, double colon, run, and we're going to give it a ref new DirectX view source, and it will do the rest. And obviously, because our main is a, a function itself, we'll just finish it off with a return zero. So this is the function that we're going to need to call in main to call, to create our factory firstly. And then our factory create view function will be automatically called by the WinRT framework. All right. So now that we're actually going to be running this program, uh, how do we understand how things are going to work inside DirectX View? Because we haven't looked at the implementation. Well, it turns out that this is equally simple. Inside your iFramework View, there are a few functions that you will need. The first one is initialize. And just as, what, just as 
what it says. All of these have their own constructors, or not constructors, they have their own arguments. But for now, what we will do is we'll just leave them blank. And for brevity, I'm not going to put in the, the comment braces to show that there's more there anymore. So initialize, just as you would understand it, this is one of the first things that are called. And any initialization logic that we want to add should go in here. So I don't really need to add any description. The second thing that we need to look at is set window. So what this will do is it's going to give us an instance of our core window class. And we'll go more into detail about core windows in the next section when we actually write the code. But this is basically a reference to every window-based operation and property that we might need in our DirectX application. The next function we'll take a look at is load. And this is obviously a good chance for us to add in things that load our graphics and so on and so forth. And there's not much more that needs to be said about that. And the important one that we're going to use for most of our stuff is run. And inside here, there are a few things that we need to do. So let's just do this. One thing that we will need to do inside run is we're going to need to make, make ourselves a game loop. What a game loop is, is it's repeating code that basically keeps the game going. And as soon as this run function ends, the DirectX application will call uninitialize and end. So just while we're there, that calls uninitialize. Sorry about that, I'm terrible with spelling. So uninitialize. And this is the last thing that is called once our game loop ends. So in our game loop, we need to add in repeating code. And as part of this, we need to do all of our game logic. So updating of objects, where they must go, how they must move, how the player interacts with the game. And we also need to do our drawing. And we're going to cover drawing in more detail and cover some good practices to make the drawing more, uh, more safe in terms of the end result for the user being good, not necessarily having graphical artifacts that we want to avoid. And uh, the other thing that we need inside this game loop is to register and listen for events. And the reason we need to register and listen for these events is things such as a user clicking on something or pressing a button on the keyboard or the application uh, the application being minimized or snapped to the side. These are things that we will get events for and we will need to respond to these events to give the best experience to the end user. And this is basically all that we're going to cover for this tutorial. However, if we just go back to the slides here, this is basically the, the way that we can look at how things are called. So in our main, we're going to call core application run. That's going to take in an iFramework view source, and we, it's going to automatically for us call a create view. And the create view will give a, a, an instance of iFramework view. And it'll be our implementation, and it'll call all of the functions as it needs them. Obviously, this means it'll first call initialize. Uh, it'll call set window and load also very early and it will call run and wait for the run function to end before it calls uninitialize and then our application will close. It's very simple. Uh, it can be very daunting if you're trying to learn it for the very first time, but I hope that I was able to describe things very simply and easily that you can have a good understanding of how it works. I look forward to your feedback and I hope that you can stick with me along my journey of learning DirectX so that I can give you the same knowledge that I'm getting out of it. Thank you for watching.